In this video, we'll create this awesome Gantt chart in Excel. It's fully dynamic, so when you change the project start date, it's going to automatically update the entire timeline. You can track the progress of your tasks with the percentage completion bar, and you can add more activities as you see fit. Several people that I showed this to were impressed that you could do something like this in Excel. So let me show you how to do it in four simple steps. The first part for us is going to be formatting the sheet with the right values. So over here, we have a completely blank Excel file. Let's get started around row number eight here, where we'll add all the different columns. So we'll have one for the task, then let's put the project lead. So this is kind of the person that's going to be in charge of the project. Next to that, we're going to have the start date. Then we'll have the end date. And the days here is going to be the difference between the two. And finally, let's add another column called progress. So this is going to be the percentage completion. Under the task column over here, we can add the different tasks that we'll have. And maybe we split them into three different stages. So we'll have a planning stage, task number one, number two, etc. So let me fast forward that. So here we have a planning stage, an execution stage, and a review stage. For the tasks themselves, we can always just indent them a bit with this button up over here. Same up here. So this way they look like they're grouped under each stage. And feel free to add more if that's something that suits your template better. From here, we want to add all of the project leads. So basically this is the people that are in charge of each project. And again, I'm just going to fast forward that. Great, we now have some name values and we're going to add a start and end date, basically some rough estimates for the task start and the task completion. So I've added that for the days here, the simple way is just taking the end date minus the start date. That said, if you don't want to account for things like weekends, you can use the net work days formula. So what this does is it only accounts for work days. So I'm going to select the start and the end date over here. We can't see right now. But you can see it does have quite a big difference. So this just depends on your company's policy. I'm happy with this one and I'm just going to double click on the bottom to drag it down. But you'll see I get these zeros. So I'm just going to add a condition which basically says up front like if hit the tab key. If let's say we don't have a start date. So this is equal to empty and we show empty with these two uh, quotations comma. Then we want to leave it as empty. However, if it's not empty, we do want to add this subtraction. We'll close that parenthesis and hit enter. Now, when we drag this down by double clicking here, you see that when it's empty, we don't have anything. And finally, the progress here is just going to be a percentage, like let's say 50%. So let me just auto fill that. Great. So I've added these percentages here a bit randomly. And now we can work on actually formatting these different columns. So let's suppose these row seven and row eight should be in dark blue. We can do that up over here and clicking on the dark blue color. And let's say the color now, the font color is going to be white, just so there's a bit of contrast there. And for each of these stages, let's say we put them in light blue. So we can kind of get that as a separator. If you want to copy this down, you can just double click on this painter. You'll see how it's selected and then select this one and this one down below as well. Hit on escape there to get out of that. So that's the first part done. With that, we can also get rid of all these grid lines, which are a bit distracting by going over to view and clicking on unticking on the grid lines. And instead we can add some of our own borders in here. So let's go ahead and select all of the different tasks. So all of this part right here go under home and under borders over here, go to more borders and we'll add a few. So let's say we want them in a bit of a light gray color like this one right here. And we'll add a top border, a middle one and a bottom one. With that, just click on OK. And you can see what that's looking like. The second stage for us is to work on all of the dates and making those dynamic. For this, let's go up right over here and we'll add all of the different date measures that we need. So first, it's just going to be the project name and then I'm going to add a few more here. So I've added the start, the current date and the weeks in progress. Let me just call this ABC test as the project name and the project start date is going to be, I don't know, whatever date you want to start it in. In my case, let's say the 10th of January 2024. And the current date is simply today's date. So we can use the equals today formula. Close up parenthesis and hit enter. 
for the week in progress down over here, we want to measure the difference between these two counted in weeks and you'll see why this is relevant after. So it's just going to be equals to the current date minus the projected start date and hit enter. Right now this is in days, so it's 47 days. We can put it in parentheses here and divide that by seven. So this is in a weekly format now, so seven weeks. And we're just gonna put a round up in front, just so we're rounding up to a full number. And that's gonna make sense again later on. So let's say with zero decimals, close up parentheses, and we're just missing one at the front as well. And now we can hit on enter. We can also reformat this to say week. So hit on control one there. And under this pop-up, we wanna go to number. So here under the type, we're just gonna type WK and then the space and the pound sign. So week seven, you can see the sample up there and click on okay. Finally, for the project start here, maybe we can add some kind of note. So new note, and we might say something like insert start date. Now, whenever they hover over it, they'll understand that they need to put their date in here. So let's get started with this side of the timeline. And over here is going to be the first week. So this would just be week one, then equals to week one plus one, right? Week two, etc. And before I drag this any further, let me reformat them with control one. And again, we'll put the week in front, WK space pound. So week one, week two. And let me drag this along all the way to around column AF, which should be week 25 for us. There we go. And just above that, we wanna add the actual days, so the dates themselves, which the first one is gonna be the project start date, and we'll hit on enter there. Then from there on, it's going to be this figure, plus seven, that's gonna be the next week for us, and so forth. So again, I'm just gonna drag this all the way to week 25. Obviously, you can make it longer if you need to. Now, if we go ahead and change this start date to something like, let's say the 30th of January, you'll notice how all the numbers will automatically switch. Let's go ahead and bring that back for now. Currently, we don't have anything inside of the Gantt chart, so let's go ahead and work on that. So right here, essentially what we wanna do is highlight the areas that are in between these two dates, right? Between the start and the end date. So ideally, this should be dynamic, and that's where something like conditional formatting can come handy. So we'll first select the whole area that's relevant to us, so all the way to week 25, and select all of the tasks there. We'll go to conditional formatting and we'll create a new rule entirely. It's gonna be based on a formula for us, so we'll click on that. And down on the bottom over here, what we're going to add is equals, and that's how it'll start because we want two different conditions. The first one is gonna be that it needs to be that this date over here needs to be greater than or equals to the start date, comma, but it also needs to be, so this figure again, less than or equals to the end date. That's how we'll guarantee it's within the two. Now, here's a bit of the tricky part, in my opinion, which is the dollar signs. So for the H side, we want it to move across the different columns. So we'll delete the dollar sign from there. That's essentially what's locking it. Same thing over here, we'll delete the dollar sign. However, for the start and the end dates, we want them to move down, but not across. So we need to do the opposite. That means that we need to delete it from the number because we want it to move down across rows. Same thing down here. Now for the format itself. So what do we want it to do? Let's say we just want a light green fill like this one right here. Click on OK, OK again. And now you can see what that looks like. If we further extend the dates or shorten them, let's say I go to the month of January, you can see that's going to update. So it's all looking good. The idea here is that on top of this light green bar that we currently have, we're going to add a dark green bar, which is going to be dictated by the progress. So if 90% is done, then it should be filled pretty much fully there. Before that, we do wanna work on this part right here. Let's say we change the coloring here to having a data bar. So under conditional formatting, we'll go to data bars. Let's say we go for a yellow color. This, this is kind of up to you there. Now you'll notice that it might be a bit odd in that even though I might have a 50 here and another 50 over here, you'll see that the scales actually change where they're all relative, 
so we need to fix that. So we'll select this whole area under conditional formatting, go to manage rules, and we'll edit this one. And the reason it's relative is because it's right now in automatic mode. We want to switch that to just a number and a number over here as well. So we want it to go from zero to one as the maximum. We don't want it to move around. So we'll click on OK, apply and OK. Now that's looking better where 100 should top it all up while 50 leaves it at half. Before we complete this Gantt chart, if you're finding this a bit too fast or a bit too challenging, I'd recommend you check out our Excel for business and finance course. In the course, we'll go over all of the essentials you need to know, ranging from formatting best practices and shortcuts to building awesome visual dashboards, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. This is basically the course I wish I had before I started working in an Excel heavy corporate job. If that sounds interesting, check out the link in the description below. And if you want more than just Excel, we also have a ton of other courses on Power BI, finance evaluation, and much more. All right, back to the video. All right, so we've now completed the progress bar with the data bar on it. And we also have these highlight colors over here based on the start and the end date. That said, it doesn't show how much we've completed here based on the progress bar. So that's what we'll work on. Right now we should be at 50%, so half of this should be in dark green. For this, we're going to require a slightly more complex formula. So let's take a look at it. We'll go to equals and hit the tab key. And really the first part is the same as before. So it's gonna be that this date over here has to be greater than or equals to the start date, comma, and the same date has to be less than or equals to the end date. Up till there, it's exactly like before, but here's where it gets different. Instead of just having that end date, we'll delete that and instead go for the start date plus a set number of days based on this, which is really the same as the end date. The difference here is that we now can account for the progress percentage. So we would multiply this by the progress percentage now let's add some parentheses here to make it a bit easier for us to understand. Close the parentheses again. And just before we exit here, we need to add the references so the dollar signs so we can move it accordingly. So for the column up over here, we want it to lock only on the row. So we'll put the dollar sign on the seven. This way it can move along. Same thing over here for the next H7. And for these other parts, we only want to lock the actual column so it stays on the start date column same thing with any other column there so we'll put a dollar sign on this c10 as well and on these two parts as well so this one and this one right here and hit enter now you can see that here it says that it's true so let's drag this along so it's saying that at the 50 50 percent mark it switches to false meaning that the progress is only 50 percent there if I switch this to 100, it's true all along. That said, if I go to zero, you'll notice that it gives me that it's still true, meaning it's kind of like it's already started, but that's not really the case based on this, right? So here, what we're gonna do is at the very end, let's go ahead and put a minus one. That way it's gonna be false. So we just drag this along and let's test it again with 100. So it's all looking true, 50%, half true. So that's looking good there. And the idea is that once we have this formula, we want to copy it. So I'm just going to select all of it and copy it. We'll put it inside of the conditional formatting. So we'll select this, this whole area all the way to the last row there, to the last column, sorry. And we'll go to conditional formatting, highlight, so new rule, and use a formula to determine which cells to format again. And we'll just paste that formula in there as the format let's say we go for a dark green like this one over here hit on okay okay and now you can see what that's looking like let's go ahead and delete all of these true false because we don't need that but now at 25 percent there we're here then 50 all the way to 100 so you can see how that updates dynamically that said it is a bit hard to see right now and that's partially because we don't have any grid lines so let's add some of those by selecting the whole area. So all the way to the end there. 
And from here, what we'll do is go to our borders and more borders to customize fully. Let's say we go for that same light gray that we did earlier and we're gonna go for the outline and the inside. You can see the preview right here. Click on OK. And now we can see much better which week we're in. In this final stage four, we have two main tasks. The first one is to be able to see things properly as we scroll along. And for that, we can add a freeze panes. So right around here, let's go scroll all the way up and in H9 roughly, I'm just going to go to view and click on freeze panes, freeze panes. This way we can drag sideways like so and we can drag up or down as well. If you had many more tasks, it would obviously be even more useful. The other thing that would be useful is to know which week we're on. So right now we're in week seven, so it would be nice to highlight that week seven. For this, we'll use conditional formatting again, and we'll select the whole area from the very top to the bottom there, just like so. And we'll go to home, conditional formatting, and create a new rule, which should be quite simple. This rule is going to say that this week one right here should equals to the current week, so the week in progress that we calculated earlier. We want one side to be dynamic, so we'll delete that dollar sign from the H. And for the format, it's kind of up to you here, but let's say we go for a border that's gonna be in uh, bright red. This way we'll be able to see it quite clearly. And I'm just gonna put it on both ends. Hit on OK. OK again. And now you can see what that looks like. We're currently in week seven, so that's the part that's highlighted. Awesome, and in just a few minutes, we've managed to make this fully dynamic Gantt chart where we can change the start date, things move automatically based on our progress, and we can even add more activities as we wish. For more on Excel visuals and dashboards, check out this video over here to make an even more advanced dashboard or take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.